everyone! Today I want to share an updated review of the Notebook Therapy Bullet Journals with you. I did this review about a year ago, but they've come out with so many more options since then, so I thought we could take a look at some of the newer ones together. I'll also make a better pen and watercolor test in this video, as well as share my personal experiences using these journals and comparing them to other notebooks I have in my collection. And just to be transparent with you, I have worked with notebook therapy in the past and some of the notebooks I'll show in this video were sent to me for free. This video is not sponsored though, no one asked me to make this review and I'll assure you that I'll be completely honest while reviewing these journals. I've also been working with other brands and there's no brand that has my loyalty or that I intentionally want to promote more than others. Also, the first journal I used from Notebook Therapy was bought with my own money and that's pretty much the same experience I've had with all the other ones when it comes to the paper and user experience. So the only thing that has really changed are the updated cover options. But now that that's out of the way, let's first list the basic information about these. So these A5 notebooks cost about 31 US dollars and they come with 176 dotted unnumbered pages. There are no pre-printed pages in these and the paper has this crispy white color and is 160 GSM thick, which means that there is pretty much zero ghosting or bleed through while using the journal. There's no pen loop, but you get two bookmarks, a back pocket, and a matching clipper with each notebook design that you can find from the back pocket. I want to point out that if you're looking for a notebook for bullet journaling on their website, you probably want to choose the A5 size and not the one that's called original size. That one is smaller and has fewer pages, so usually the typical size for bullet journal is the A5, though of course you can always go with whatever option you want. The paper thickness in this is the same with the art journal, olive journals, the scribbles of matter pro journal, and other high quality bullet journals on the market. In my previous review, I showed you this paper comparison, first with my other 160 GSM journals that have a very similar pure white paper color, which is my personal preference. And then here we have some other notebooks that have more of an ivory tone paper. So I think especially here, you can really see the difference in the paper color. If you like to paint directly in your journal or use a lot of stickers, I think the crispy white color is very useful because the colors show up very bright against it and stickers with white borders usually blend with this color the best. But if you're looking for more of a vintage or softer look for your journal, I think a notebook with an ivory toned paper might suit you better. But now that we have some basics out of the way, let's move on to talk about some of the updated cover options. So in my last review, I think my biggest criticism about these journals was the cover material. They have many options with these vegan faux leather covers. That's maybe not my favorite. It has almost this soft quality to it, so it might get some dents and scratches pretty easily. I personally don't mind it too much, but if you're someone who travels a lot with your journal and wants to be able to just throw it in your bag, this is probably not the best cover option for you. I'll show you this against my other faux letter cover journal, which is from Page Anchor. This is my reading journal, and when it comes to the fake leather covers, this is the style I like a little bit more. So as you can see, this one has more of a real leather look. And I know it's always a personal preference, but I would prefer a leather cover to look a little bit more like this. However, since my last review, Notebook Therapy has come out with, I believe, two new cover options, which I was so excited about. And I have both of them to show you today. So first we have this pretty standard linen cover that's very similar, for example, with the Archer and Olive journals. This brown rose journal is in the size B5, so it's a little bit bigger than the A5, as you can see. I was actually thinking that I might use this as my reading journal next year, but the big size definitely feels a little bit intimidating, so we'll see. 
In my experience, the linen covered notebooks get dirty pretty easily because all the dust is kind of stuck to it and you can't really clean it. But I think they do look very timeless and elegant and have this nice fabric feel to them. But then we have another cover option and that's this soft velvet material. I feel like everyone and their moms have been using this dark green velvet notebook and I completely understand why. I think this might be my favorite bullet journal design I've ever seen. The velvet cover feels so soft and nice. It looks a lot like the linen cover but just feels a lot softer and has a little bit more color variation to it as you can see. I haven't really seen anything like this from other brands. So I think it's just a very unique option and currently they have many other journal designs in the same material too. This is the Midnight Garden design. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I think this will be my next bullet journal that I'll use for the second half of this year. I can't really say anything about if this gets dirty or not because I haven't used these velvet cover journals. Just by the feel of it, I would predict that it probably does in the same way as the linen covers, but the feel of this journal is so nice that I will probably forgive that. So if you have a certain cover finish in mind, be sure to read the descriptions of the notebooks carefully. They always mention which material the cover is and also be careful when choosing the bullet journal size so you definitely get the one you're looking for. But now that I've bored you all with these notebook b-roll video clips, let's move on to the pen and watercolor test. I tried to dig up as many different types of pens as I could find. So first we have some basic Pigma Microns in different sizes. Then I followed that with my Tombow Furenosuke, one gold metallic pen. Then this black Uniposca marker, an Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen and then another acrylic paint type of pen from Artistro. Then I moved on to some water-based brush pens like the Kuretake Clean Color Real Brush Pen and some Tombow Dual Brush Pens. For the brush pens, I also tested out making three layers and six layers with each of these colors and seeing how the paper reacts to that. Then lastly, I also tried out my fountain pen and I was actually pretty surprised by how little feathering there was with this paper. I don't really use fountain pens in my bullet journal, but I know some of you would probably like it. And I think this paper did better than some other journals I've tested in the past. So with all of these pens, there was very, very minimal ghosting. I think only some of the brush pens where I went over the same area six times kind of showed through, but even that's barely visible as you can see here. I always like to show you a quick comparison with some other journals I've done a pen test for in the past. Because especially if you are newer to bullet journaling and don't really know what paper thickness to go for, here you can see how big difference the paper thickness has. I personally wouldn't use anything lower than maybe 140 GSM. But the Lemome 120 GSM is also not that bad. Now I'll quickly show you how the paper reacts with an alcohol-based pen. These are my Copic markers and if you're familiar with these pens, they bleed through absolutely anything. So I think it's not really fair to even expect otherwise. I've had a hard time finding any type of paper that wouldn't have bleed through with these. So unfortunately, they are something that I wouldn't really recommend using directly in a blood journal. And then lastly, let's finish everything off with a watercolor and gouache paint test. So first I made a simple square and then tried to blend two colors together. First using the wet on wet technique and then just going straight on dry paper. The wet on wet technique means that we are first applying a layer of clean water and then adding the color on that area afterwards. And I probably wouldn't use that technique with these journals. In general, I think bullet journal paper is not the best for watercoloring and the notebook therapy journals behave very similarly with all the other bullet journals I've used. You're definitely able to create simple illustrations and even add a few layers of colors on top of each other and do some light blending. 
but if you're about to create a bigger landscape where you want the background to look very smooth and blended i would highly suggest using real watercolor paper instead and just gluing the painting to the journal I think wash paints are actually a little bit safer option because using them requires less water and the style of painting is a little bit different as well. So you're not relying on blending as much as with regular watercolors. But that all being said, I've been using these journals for probably a year in total now and I quite often create watercolor or gouache paintings and I think probably the most impressed I've been with this journal was my February theme this year where I created these black backgrounds and even went over some of those areas with watercolors and still had zero ghosting or bleed through. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you very likely won't have any ghosting problems with these journals and I think in general they are a very strong option on the market. I personally don't see any difference in the user experience between the notebook therapy and art and olive journals so I think it really comes down to your own personal preference about the brands and the cover design options. If you have been interested to buy any of these, I do have a 10% discount code for you guys, as I do for some other brands of journals, so all of my discount codes are listed in the description. Using the code benefits me a little bit as well, so do whatever you want with it, no pressure whatsoever. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. If you have any further questions about these or some other journals I mentioned in the video, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're new around here and you want to stay tuned for some more journaling and art stuff, please consider subscribing. But other than that, I guess that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.